Very good. I was just cutting up with the choir this morning. They was on this side, and tonight they're on this side. And I said, "What y'all doing?" The the movable choir. The movable choir. Very good. Well, let's thank the Lord for His goodness. I was talking to the fellows. Had a good day, brother uh, Chris and I. And the fellows went out to eat and had a good time. We're talking about seeing all the rain. You know, the Book of Acts says rain is a witness of God. And every time you see rain, you'll remember God is alive. It's a witness. The book of Acts teaches that. And uh, every drop, every raindrop is in existence, is, a, is the um, existence of God. So, that's a, so don't be fussy about the rain. You know, I used to fuss about snow. I do not like snow, only for a day and a sled and I'm done. And then really the Lord convicted me and I looked up the scripture in snow. And you know, snow is like a fertilizer. To the ground it puts in the ground what rain does not and i just got convicted i said lord sorry you know what you're doing i don't so when it snows and it rains it's because god knows what he's doing amen all righty well let's pray father we love you we do thank you that you're in control we're thankful we have a god that has the wind in his fist thank you that you hung the sun and the moon on nothing thank you lord we have an ocean that comes in and out at your bidding thank you lord we have a creator that is in control Lord, help us to understand if you can control the moon and the sun and the stars and the tide, that surely, surely you can control our lives. Help us to trust you. Help us, Lord, to lean on you in our difficult times, especially as we heard this morning, the burdens that come into our lives and hearts. Help us to trust you with them. Help us to realize and understand we have a God that's able uh, to bear the burdens. Help us with it now. Help us to guide us, lead us, and direct us. And we'll be careful to thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, let's stand and sing a song, get our hearts right for the Lord's word. Let's sing it, would you? It may be rainy outside, but we have heavenly sunshine on our inside. Walking in sunlight all of my journey over the mountain. God leads his dear children along, some through the water, some through the flood, all through the blood. Thank you. 
sing that next verse. Brother Rex, can you do me a favor? On that chorus slide where it says, some through the fire, but all through the blood, can you change that to say all through Christ's blood? Because that's the truth, isn't it? It's not just through any blood. It's through the blood of the shed Lord of Jesus Christ. So let's, let's make that change that way. The next time we sing it, it'll remember that and we can sing it all through Christ's blood. Sometimes on the mount where the sun shines so bright, God leads his dear children along. Sometimes in the valley, in darkest of night, God leads his dear children along. Here we go. Some Pastor mentioned us having a movable choir. Well, this evening they are going to move. They're going to move down to the piano, so we'll give them a minute to get there. They're going to sing for us a song, Till the Storm Passes By. In a storm, a physical storm. Was it last week we had the tornado come through? And I got up and I heard the horses doing something very strange and they, they can sense that barometric pressure they can sense all that going on and I looked out and it was real gloomy and of course all our phones went off and I sent everybody to the basement and I go to the basement I'm going to watch the TV while we watched and it, then I heard them say SMS school and then I heard them say Springdale school and then I heard I thought Claiborne High School I said man this thing is right over our head and uh, as we listened and watched the storm and of course we was in the basement and doing and it kept saying you need to be in your protective area not now if you're in the ss sm area and i was like goodness this thing is wrong top of our heads and uh, as i watched it pass through and then sneedville then on to and i thought god is protecting god is guiding us in the storm gives us a safe place i thought about our basement i thank god for a place we could go in a safe haven that's what god is in it he's in the hollow of thy hand i love that they're gonna sing this song that's a sweet blessing
you've got a bulletin there handy in front of you, just a few things by way of announcement. Don't forget, starting in the month of July, we will have our Sundays in the summer. We're, we're going to go Sunday evening over a few truths of what we believe, who we are, why we do what we do. So keep that on your calendar. This Wednesday night, now as a reminder, our Master Clubs program is over for the year. We still will have a children's service on Wednesday nights, but also on Wednesdays at 7 o'clock, um, Pastor is going to have his church class right here um, at 7 o'clock. That's this Wednesday and next Wednesday, June the 19th. Men on the Mountain, this Thursday evening, um, a group of men are going to be going up to the Men on the Mountain. Pastor's driving the prison bus. Um, don't forget to wear your shirts. Um, and as Pastor said this morning, if you did not register, it's not too late. You can still get on and go. Um, the jail cells are not closed. If you're going to be leaving, we're going to be leaving the church bef- around 3 o'clock, so make sure you're here in enough time before 3 um, to load up and, and get on the way, and then they'll be coming back late Thursday evening to drop off here at the church, um, so keep that keep that in mind. Father's Day, June 16th, next Sunday, um, we're going to take a moment and recognize our fathers, those that are with us, and uh, there will be no evening service, and that way you'll be able to spend time with family and uh, enjoy that. Anniversary Sunday, June the 23rd, is this 17, 17 years? Here in Claiborne County, um, the Lord has done such wonderful, amazing things, and I'm glad to be just a small part of that. But come out Sunday morning on June the 23rd. We're have a fellowship dinner after the service, so sign up the sign up sheet on the foyer table, and then stick around for fellowship. There will not be evening service on that Sunday as well. And then coming up in July, Vacation Bible School. How many of you have volunteered previous, in previous years to help during Vacation Bible School? Well, if I can mimic the poster that the U.S. military used, we need you. So enlist, sign up. Um, the theme this year is Keepers of the Kingdom. We'll be talking about the armor of God, you know, the breastplate of righteousness, the sword of the Spirit. I'm excited about that, but we need help. We can't do it without you. So um, let Miss Lois know we're working on a registration where you can register online um, by scanning that code. It's working for students, so parents, if you want to save some writer's cramp the day of, um, scan that code or go to Twin City TN and fill out the form that's there. And then we do, keep in mind, we do need individually wrapped snacks that we can send home with the students at the end of, end of the night. So things like little Debbie cakes. I really like Nutty Buddies. So just throwing that out there, um, just throwing that, you know, for what it's for what it's worth. Um, but a lot of things, a lot of things coming up. We're excited about um, everything that's going on. So men, if you will come along, we'll take up our offering this evening. Speaking of enlisting. Let's pray and ask the Lord to bless this offering. Lord, we do thank you that you are our hiding place. Lord, that in the midst of the storms of life, you're there to protect us and to guide us. Lord, I do pray that um, as our brother preached this morning, as we bear the burdens of life, that we will cast them on you. Lord, I do pray that you'd be at the rest of the service, be with Brother Dallas as he preaches. Lord, I do pray that you bless this offering. May it be used to further the ministry here at Twin City Baptist Church that the gospel can go out freely to all those that that need it. We love you and we thank you for all you've done for us. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen.
well, I was just sitting there reminiscing just a little bit about the 17 years. It's hard to believe that it's been that long, 17 years. I mean, we, we've about grown old together. Some of us have. And I said, be careful, our preacher. Be careful growing old together. Uh, and I was just alluding to, you said, you like Nutty Buddy Bar? Uh, one time I got up here, y'all probably remember this. I got up here, and I just fussed and fussed about pecan pies. Some of you ladies wouldn't bring pecan pies to these fellowships, and I was just, where's the pecan pies in this place? You know, I was fussing. Boy, I was really preaching to them, buddy. I was getting it at it. Well, I didn't know it, but they concocted a plan, and I had about, I don't know, I don't even know how many they were. They was a bunch of pecan pies. <laughs> it started coming. They st- first one, second, third. There's 17, 18 things coming. I said, good night. What did I do? I didn't go, I won't do that no more. I won't fuss no more about pecan pies. But uh, I, I, that when he said that, that's the very first thought I had. They go, you better be careful. Be careful. You have nutty buddy bars coming at your nose. But uh, one lady said, I was going to go to Sam's and get you them little pecan pies, you know, that comes in like 24 packs. Of, I said, oh, I'm glad I didn't get those. <laughs> yeah. That'll teach you. That'll teach you. Well, Brother Dallas is going to sing. I appreciate so much the message this morning. <laughs> sing. I did that again, didn't it? You got to sing, brother. It's the Lord's will. It's the Lord's will. You going to sing? If you'll sing, I'll sing. <laughs> I know he can't sing. That's why. <laughs> Miss Elizabeth's going to sing. Where's she at? She's up here. Yeah, she's going to come sing, but he's going to preach. But I appreciate the message this morning. It was so encouraging to my heart. Thank you, brother. That was such a delivery that I, we needed. And he's going to come sing, uh, preach. I'm telling you, I got crossed up, brother. But Miss Elizabeth's going to sing. That'd be odd, her preaching, you sing. <laughs> I may be doing it that way. Let her preach, you sing. So. But she's going to honor the Lord, I know. Let's, let's pray. The Father has a plan, though it's hard to see it now. You feel you're walking all alone, but he is there, no doubt. When the storm around you rages, and you're tossed to and fro, when you're faced with life's decisions, not sure which way to go, stand still and let go. When the enemy surrounds you and the walls are closing in, when the tide is swiftly rising and you've wondered where he's been, friend, there never was a moment that his arms were reaching out. You can rest assured and be secure. God is moving right now. Stand still and let God move. Standing still is hard to do. When you feel you have reached the end, he'll make a way for you. Stand still and let God move. The answer will come, but only in his time. Stand still. God move. Amen. Appreciate that song. I, I'll tell you how good of a singer I am. I was, uh, I was preaching in Michigan not long ago, and I was sitting on the front row there, and they had a, they had a, a quartet that was going to do the special music that week. And I was sitting right next to him, and one fellow was singing baritone, another fellow was singing tenor, another fellow was singing bass, another fellow was singing lead. And I'm so good, I was singing all four parts at the same time. Amen. That's how good I am. And I, I was, uh, Brother Mark, I was standing next to Brother Fugit not long ago, and we, it was during the song service and the church service, and boy, I was just, I was just belting her out. And, uh, 
and he heard me, and I, and I whispered in his ear, I said, next time I preach at Clay's Mill, do you want me to sing a special? And he said, yeah, on a hill far away, amen, and so, amen. I appreciate that good song uh, tonight, amen. I want you to turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter number 6. Uh, it's good to be here this evening, and uh, I trust that each and every one of you had a good uh, afternoon today. I sure did. I enjoyed my, my time uh, uh, with at lunch and fellowship uh, with your preacher and Brother Mark and Levi. I had a good time there and just uh, appreciate you, Brother Peoples, allowing me to be able to come back to Twin City uh, again tonight and um, have good liberty uh, preaching behind the pulpit here. And, and I can't always say that, amen, I, I, but I like it when I go to a place and I have good liberty to preach. And, and I understand as a guest preacher, uh, the reason I have good liberty when I stand behind another man's pulpit is because you've got a faithful man of God that stands behind this pulpit Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, and preaches the Word of God, and therefore it gives guest preachers liberty uh, when they preach. Amen. And so, so it's good to be here. I, uh, uh, brother, uh, brother, uh, Peoples and I were were talking about. And matter of fact, uh, two weeks from today, on the twenty third, be seventeen weeks or 17 years, it probably seems like 17 weeks, but it's been 17 years that I uh, started the church here. Boy, I just loved hearing the testimony today and how God started this place here. And uh, we were talking about how old we were, and we're, we're right around the same age. And so 17 years ago, Twin City Baptist Church was started. And 17 years ago, next week will be uh, that uh, my wife and I have been in evangelism. And boy, uh, I, 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 uh, I don't stand amazed in all that God has done. I just stand amazed in all that God's done for me. Amen. And I, I can't, I, I can't uh, just even imagine why he would do it for me. But boy, I sure am thankful. And um, people always, as, brother, as I said, Brother Peoples and I were talking about, uh, about our age earlier in I, people always, anytime I give my life story, people always try to figure out uh, how old I am. Well, I, I'll tell you how old I am. I'm so old, I remember when you could go to a convenience store and you could buy three bags of chips, two Coca-Colas, and one pack of gum for a dollar. But you can't do that anymore because there's security cameras everywhere now, amen. It makes it harder, <laughs> harder to do that, amen. But anyway... Anyway, I want you to turn your Bibles to, to Matthew chapter number 6 tonight, and uh, I, I, I'm certainly not an expert on the matter whatsoever, uh, but I, I do want to preach on the, the, the subject of prayer tonight, on the subject of prayer tonight, and um, just to give you just a little bit of an outline of, of Matthew chapter number 1 to Matthew chapter number 6. Uh, we find over in Matthew chapter 1 and 2, we find the subject of the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And aren't you thankful for the virgin birth of the Lord Jesus Christ? The miracle of the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ and how he left the very portals of heaven and he came to a sin-cursed world and in him was no sin. And as we mentioned this morning, yes, he walked among, among sinful men and Yes, he uh, uh, performed miracles. He allowed the blind eyes to see, the deaf ears to hear, the lame to walk. But he didn't come to perform miracles. He came for one purpose and one purpose only, and that was to lay down his life on the cross of Calvary and shed his blood for your sin and for my sin. Aren't you thankful for that? Amen. Uh, we, I, I like the song just as much as you like the song, but uh, I, I forget the very title of the song, but there's somewhere in the middle of that song where it says, where God searched through heaven to find a Savior. Can I say that's not biblical? God did not search through heaven to find a Savior. He was at the right hand of the Father already, and he left willingly to die on the cross for our sin. So we find the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ in chapter number 1 and 2. And then in chapter number 3, we find the baptism of 
of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, we understand that he was not being baptized because he just received the Savior. He was the Savior of all mankind. He was being an example to those that would come and receive him as their Savior. Just a side note about the baptism of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, you remember when that dove descended upon the Lord Jesus Christ and then God the Father said, This is my Son in whom I'm well pleased. Here's just a side note about that dove. You understand a dove is the only bird in the entire uh, creation of, uh, of birds uh, that does not have a gallbladder. You know what a gallbladder is. A gallbladder is what takes all the impurities out of our body and, and cleanses our, our, our body, just a natural cleanser, a gallbladder. And the very bird that descended upon the sinless Son of God could not even have any impurities uh, inside of that. that I, I thought that was pretty interesting about uh, that dove. And not only do we see the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ in chapter 1 and 2 and the baptism of Jesus in chapter number 3, and then uh, in, in chapter number 4 we find that Jesus is now on the battlefield. And my dear friend, and we'll talk a little bit about uh, that temptation here in a little while, but may, may we all be reminded tonight that if, uh, if Satan himself brought temptation to the sinless Son of God's life, who in the world do we think that we are that he's not going to bring temptation in our life as well? So we, we find him there on the battlefield. And then just to keep it all alliterated, uh, we find in chapter number 5, we find those Beatitudes. Uh, and then now in chapter number 6, we find that Jesus is taking the disciples up through Bible college, amen. He's taking them through Bible college, and he's teaching them about the subject of prayer. Uh, in other scripture, we find that the disciples, they asked Jesus, or they, they told Jesus to teach us how to pray. They could have asked Jesus to teach them how to do anything. They could have said, teach us how to preach or teach us how to perform miracles, but they didn't say that. They said, Lord, teach us to pray. And we find that Jesus begins to uh, take the disciples through this course uh, on, in Bible college on the matter of prayer. Isn't it a wonderful thing to be able to access the throne room of grace and spend time with God in prayer? Amen. It's a, it's a marvelous, it's a wonderful thing uh, to be able to spend time with God in prayer. And so now let's look at our scripture here in Matthew and chapter number 6. Let's read some scripture here tonight. Matthew chapter number 6. Look at verse number 6. The Bible says, But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut thy door, pray thy Father which is in secret. And thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. But when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them, look at it, for your Father knoweth what things you have need of before you ask him. My friend, I'm not even going to be able to try to detail how powerful God is because my feeble mind cannot even comprehend uh, how powerful God is. But here's an attribute of God's uh, power right here. He already knows what we need before we ask Him. I'm glad tonight that I never alert God uh, by asking Him for the things that I need in my life. He already knows what I need. Amen. Look at verse number 9. Look what the Bible says. Uh, the Bible says, After this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you, and Lord, we sure do thank you, Lord, for first loving us. Lord, we thank you for salvation. Lord, we thank you for being far better to us than we can ever deserve. And Lord, we come to you tonight. Lord, I ask you that you would speak to hearts, Lord, like you can. Lord, I pray that you bring a holy hush upon this place, and you do the work that only you can do. And Lord, I understand that nobody here has come to hear uh, from Chris Dallas, but Lord, they've come to hear from heaven tonight. Lord, I pray that that could happen. Lord, I pray, Lord, if there would be anybody lost here tonight that you'd save them. 
uh, by the good grace of God. And Lord, we'll thank you for all that you do. In your precious name, I pray. Amen. Matthew chapter number 6 and verse number 6 is my absolute favorite verse when it comes to the matter of prayer. I'll, I'll never forget when I, whenever it became a personal promise that I claimed uh, in the Word of God. I, I'd read the, the Scripture many times before I got saved in 1998. And ever since I got saved by the grace of God, uh, I, I've read my Bible every single day. I don't say that in a boastful way or a conceited way. I just understand uh, that I cannot journey through this uh, life uh, here on earth apart from the Word of God. Amen. And I'm thankful that it is my map through this journey called life. And so I've read my Bible every single day since I've been saved by the grace of God. There's been years where I've read my Bible through at least two or three times uh, in a year. And so I've read the scripture many, many times before the day that I actually uh, took this as a Bible promise that I claimed in the Word of God. It was in, uh, it was in 2007. My wife and I got married June the 16th, 2007. The day that we got married, our moving truck was on the way to Jacksonville, North Carolina, and that's where I would serve under the umbrella. I've always been in evangelism since we've been married, but we would serve under the umbrella of the Grace Baptist Church in Jacksonville, North Carolina. I don't have time to tell you uh, the story of how we actually got to Jacksonville, but uh, my wife and I went on our honeymoon to Gatlinburg, Tennessee, and then after a week of uh, being on our honeymoon, we went to we we began to show up uh, for service there at Grace Baptist Church in Jacksonville, North Carolina. Up to that point, I had didn't have any revival meetings on the calendar. That preacher gave me an unbelievable opportunity to work on staff there at Grace Baptist Church, uh, with the understanding that God had placed the call of evangelism on my life. And he gave me a staff uh, position there at the church. And uh, I, I would be the bus director. I'd be the soul winning coordinator. I'd be the toilet unclogger. Whatever needed to be done around the church, that would be my responsibility. But as the Lord opened up the doors in evangelism, I, I, I would, uh, I, I would uh, be able to, 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 to go through those doors. And I'll never forget after Nikita and I got settled in our uh, little apartment there on Piney Green Road in Jacksonville, North Carolina, and we began to get settled in the ministry there at Grace Baptist Church, I began to notice after a couple of weeks that all the staff men there at church, they, they all had their nice offices. Uh, they had their uh, uh, dedicated place where they could go and get alone and uh, study and prepare and things like that. And they had their nice desk and they had their bookshelves and all those things. And I began to, uh, after a couple of weeks, began to notice that. And I went to the preacher and said, Preacher, I, I said, is there any way that I can have a, uh, a do, you, do you have an extra room where I can have an office? And he said, well, Brother Dallas, the only uh, extra room that we have is the women's baptistry room. And he said, that can be your makeshift office. And so the women's baptistry room um, uh, became my makeshift office. I don't know if he was wanting me to, uh, wanting me to try to get a hold of my uh, feminine side or whatever. And I'm thankful that I found out I don't have a feminine side. Amen. Thank God for that. But anyway, uh, the women's baptistry room became my office. And, uh, and, and I'll never forget, after a couple of weeks uh, of moving in that office, boy, I began to have a very lonely feeling. Uh, all I knew about salvation and Christianity uh, was the church that I got saved at, at the Bethel Baptist Church in Walls, Mississippi, just outside of Memphis, Tennessee. And that's where I got saved in 1998, and that's where I was trained in the little Bible college that we had there. And all the preaching I knew was from Brother Westmoreland. And I, and I began to miss the preaching of Brother Westmoreland. And I began to miss the song leading and the, uh, the, the congregational singing and the special music uh, from Brother McFarland. And I began to miss Miss Westmoreland, uh, her singing those uh, uh, good old godly songs. And I, I, I remember having a very lonely feeling, and I, I began to just uh, have a little pity party and begin to say, man, I don't have Brother Westmoreland, and I don't have uh, Brother McFarland, and I don't have uh, the, the music to hear of Miss Westmoreland. And not in an audible voice, but in that still small voice of the Holy Spirit of God said, you may not have Brother Westmoreland, you may not have Brother McFarland, but you do have me. And I, I remember as I spent a little bit of time in prayer there that day, and I began to read my Bible, and I just so happened to be here uh, in, in, in Matthew in chapter number 6, and I read that 
verse number 6 that said, But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. I'll never forget, I took a red pen and I circled that verse, and I claimed that verse as a personal promise from God uh, to me. And then I began to dissect that verse of Matthew chapter number 6 and verse number 6 where it says, But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And I begin to understand when God says, Enter into thy closet, he's not talking about a place where there's clothes hanging from the top to the bottom, but he's talking about a designated place with him each and every day. You understand? Uh, the chair in your bedroom could be your closet. Uh, the love seat in your living room could be your closet. The drive on the way to work can be your closet. God just saying, I desire for you to have that designated place with me each and every day. And then when God says, and shut thy door behind thee, uh, uh, in today's vernacular, what he means is this. Shut the cell phones off. Shut the computers off. Shut every other form of communication off. And just you and me uh, uh, spend time with my, one another. Uh, my wife, she doesn't travel with me nearly as much uh, as she used to. For 12 years, she used to go everywhere with me uh, but now that we live in Lexington when we moved to Lexington uh, the, 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 she, she knew that she didn't want to travel nearly as much as she once did so she began to work there at our Bible college and now uh, she cooks at our, our youth camp for uh, seven weeks during the summer so she doesn't travel with me nearly as much as she once did but every week that I'm home uh, Friday night is our date night and three out of four uh, nights we just uh, have a staycation we have a, a, a date at home amen and she knows that I uh, eat in a lot of restaurants and so she will make a home cooked meal either she'll cook or I'll cook and, uh, and, and every time uh, we're at home and we eat a meal she always wants to sit at the kitchen table she doesn't want to sit in the living room she doesn't want to have dinner in bed she wants to have dinner at the kitchen table and when we're at the kitchen table she doesn't want a cell phone there she doesn't want a computer there she doesn't want an iPad there she wants my undivided attention and can I say she does deserves my undivided attention but my dear friend thank God for my wife thank God for your spouse but there's one that deserves more of our undivided attention and that's the very God of heaven that allows our heart to beat and our brain to function and he says I want you to have that place called a closet uh, uh, where you spend time with me every single day I'm thankful that throughout this Bible God has given us recipes amen and the finished product of that recipe is always the same God has given us a recipe in Matthew chapter 6, verse number 6. Here's the recipe. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret. That's the recipe. And the finished product of that recipe is this. And thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. And maybe there's somebody on the sound of my voice or a few somebody's here tonight. You, you can't really call the last time God has answered one of your prayers. It could be because we're trying to take this ingredient out and we're trying to add this ingredient. And God said no. He said the recipe has been forever settled in heaven and if you'll follow the recipe the finished product of that recipe will always be the same. Let's look at Matthew chapter 6 and verse number 6. Look at it with me. Talking about prayer tonight. Look at it. Very simple, very bottom the shelf, very elementary tonight. But my dear friend, if we can get a hold of it, I believe that my dear friend, it could revolutionize our prayer lives. Look at verse number six. The Bible says, but thou, when thou prayest. Can I say first of all about this prayer closet? It's a personal place. It's a personal place. The Lord Jesus Christ himself is making it personal to those disciples and he's making it personal to you and I as the reader. He said, but thou, when thou 
prayest. Can I say tonight, uh, uh, ultimately, I owe everything to God tonight, amen. Anything good about Chris Dallas is about what God has done in my life. So I understand that ultimately, I owe everything to God. But I'm also thankful that I had a praying mama, amen. I'm thankful that I had a mama that refused to give up on me in this matter of prayer. Uh, no, no matter how wicked and vile and sinful I became, uh, my mama never quit praying praying for me, and I'm very thankful for that. Uh, I, I was giving my life story one time in Philadelphia, Missouri, a little town of about 750 people, and I, the preacher had asked me to give my life story in the Sunday morning service, and after I got through preaching there that day, there was an older gentleman that came up to me, and he said, Brother Dallas, he said, you got way down in sin, he said, but you never got so far down away from your mama's prayers, amen. I'm thankful that I had a praying mama. I don't say this in boastfulness or pridefulness uh, tonight, uh, but I, I don't want to bring glamour to sin. I want my life to bring honor and glory to God, but there were many times in my drug addiction uh, that I would go out and I would carouse with those heathen friends, and I would put in my body what I want to put in my body, and in all reality, I was shaking my fist uh, in foolishness of the God of heaven, and I would come in in the middle of the night, sometimes two or three o'clock in the morning, uh, in a drunken stupor, and I could hear a mama in a back bedroom praying and a simple prayer just saying, God, don't let my boy die and go to hell. Save him before it's uh, too late. Uh, and I'm thankful that God heard my mama's prayers. Uh, uh, it's Sunday today, and uh, there's no doubt, uh, er, any given Sunday, I have about 25 or 30 uh, preacher. For, your preacher texted me this morning as I was traveling again, said, Brother Dallas, I just want to let you know I'm praying for your safety and the power of God to be upon your life as you preach. And I probably got 25 or 30 uh, texts text messages from different preacher friends uh, from across the country letting me know that they are praying for me. Can I say I'm thankful for a praying mama. I'm thankful for a praying wife. I'm thankful for praying friends. Uh, but my dear friend, uh, it's not my brother. It's not my sister. But it's me, oh God, standing in the need of prayer. And yes, we all have prayer needs. Uh, and your pastor will pray for those needs. Uh, and your spouse will pray for those needs. Uh, but my dear friend, every now and then, God wants to hear those needs uh, come from our own lips. Amen. You understand God never made a way uh, for you and I to access the throne room of grace to see what we can get out of God to begin with, but to see what God can get out of us, our love, our dedication, and our determination to spend time with Him. Not only is it a personal place, but look at it again with me. Look at verse number 6. He says, Enter into thy closet. Not only is this prayer closet a personal place, but this prayer closet is a peculiar place. It's a peculiar place. I don't know where your closet is. My closet changes every single week of my life. This week, uh, uh, my, my closet was on the drive from Lancaster, Kentucky to Tazewell, Tennessee. Uh, 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 th 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 this coming week, Monday through Wednesday, uh, uh, I'll be there at my home at my home at our camp property there, and that'll be my closet. Uh, Thursday through Sunday, it'll be in Hazard, Kentucky, and then uh, the next week, it'll be in uh, Charleston, Missouri, and then the next week, uh, it'll be in Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, uh, my dear friend, I don't know where your closet is, uh, but can I say tonight, uh, if the only time that you meet with God uh, is when you're within the four walls of this church building and thank God uh, we can come and worship him uh, with freedom and liberty in the within the four walls of this church building but if the only time you meet with God uh, is when you come to Twin City Baptist Church you're missing out and your family's missing out I'm glad my dear friend that God is not limited to the four walls of this church building I'm glad he's an omnipresent God and we can meet with him anywhere amen on Fridays when school is in session I I had the privilege and the opportunity to be able to teach uh, uh, at our Bible college there at, uh, at Commonwealth Baptist College on Fridays, and and uh, uh, they, they they made up a class for me called Walking with God, and I, I get to teach those young people just an overflow of my Bible study and uh, uh, my time with God in prayer. And so from where I live uh, uh, to uh, uh, to the college property is about a one-hour drive, and so uh, uh, that, that that's my time where I spend time with God in prayer prayer in my Ford F-150, amen. I don't know if you can meet with God in a Dodge or a Chevrolet, but I do know that you can meet with God in a Ford F-150, amen. I do know that. It's a peculiar place, amen. 
Not only is it a personal place, not only is it a peculiar place, look at it with me, but thou, when thou prayest, enter thy closet. And when thou hast shut thy door, can I say it's a peaceful place? It's a peaceful place. I, I, I'm not against you. I'm not on a campaign for those that watch news. I, I just personally don't watch news. I'm not against you if you do. I, I, I personally just don't watch the news. Uh, I, I used to you used to think that Hollywood was the where, where the best dramas came from, but now the best dramas come from CNN, NBC, Fox News, and all the other news stations. Amen. That's the best dramas on on prime time television. But I, I but I, I but I, sometimes as I walk, in about seventy percent of my travels, uh, I, I fly from Lexington somewhere across the country to preach, and you either go through Atlanta or you go through Detroit every single time. And as I'm walking through the corridors of those uh, uh, concourses of those uh, 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 airports, I, I can't help but hear a little snippet or or, or see something on, on on the TVs there in the airports. And, and all you hear is about school shootings, and all you hear about is uh, legalizing abortion and all you hear about uh, is wars and rumors of wars and I'm not talking about putting my head in the sand uh, but I'm thankful my dear friend when all the voices of this world are bombarding us with not only the wickedness and the evil and, and all the uh, all the turmoil across this world I'm glad that I can go to that peaceful place called a prayer closet and I can meet with the very God that gives peace amen I'm thankful that peace is passeth all understanding in a prayer closet amen not only is it a personal place not only is it a peculiar place not only is it a peaceful place but look what the Bible says but thou when thou prayest enter thy closet and when thou hast shut thy door look what it says pray to thy father which is in secret can I say this prayer closet's a private place this prayer closet's a private place you know, I can scan this crowd tonight. There, there's a couple of you that are looking up here at me, and you're possibly saying, you know, that Chris Dallas fella, he's a pretty good guy. He, he, he seems like a pretty good fella that wants to live right and wants to live clean and live holy. There's, there's a couple of you saying that. The rest of you are not saying that at all, amen. But anyway, there's a couple of you that's saying that. But you understand 100% of the people that are in this room, I can fake every single person in this room in the flesh. But when I go to the God of heaven in prayer in this place called a prayer closet, I'm not going to be able to fake God. I'm not going to be able to put on a facade with God. My friend, he knows what I've thought about this week. He knows what I've looked about and had not confessed it as sin. He knows what I've listened to and what I've talked about. My dear friend, it's a private place where we meet with the God of all heaven. Not only is it a personal place, not only is it a peculiar place, not only is it a peaceful place and a private place, Look at it, verse number 6 with me. The Bible says, And thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. I'm glad that it's a profitable place. I'm glad that it's a profitable place. How many of you believe that we serve a prayer answering God? Can I ask this a question? When's the last time God's answered one of your prayers? I'll never forget when Nikita and I got married. I, I, I guess it was a lack of faith on my part. I, I, I did not realize, Brother Mark, how wide the door the Lord was going to open up in evangelism. And the Lord allowed us to be able to preach in 70 different churches that first year in evangelism. My wife taught in the Christian school there, and so she didn't travel me much that first year. That, after that first year, she resigned from her position, and boy, she traveled me all across the country. And after that first year, we began to pray and we began to seek the, the, the Lord's face about whether or not to buy a house or to buy a motor home. And the Lord, uh, gave us, uh, the Lord gave us the green light to buy the motor home. And uh, I'll never forget, our pre we, we talked to our preacher and he, 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 he also gave us the green light. He said, Brother Dallas, he said, I think that's a great idea if the Lord's giving you peace. He said, go and look for that motor home. And we, we, we began to look and we began to do some research and do, just began to do some reviews. And we finally found the motor home that God would have us to get. Uh, and it was a 40-foot holiday rambler with uh, three slide outs. And it, it, was at a good, it was a used uh, uh, motor home, but boy, we thought, we thought it was a good price. But there was a, there was a hurdle that we had to overcome. 
we had to have 20% of the, we had to have, make a 20% down payment uh, for that motor home, and the 20% down payment was $16,500. And the hurdle was, all we had was $16.50, amen. And so, uh, so, so I, I remember going to the preacher and said, preacher, I, I said, I, I, I believe we found the motor home. I said, but I don't think we're going to be able to get it uh, because uh, we have to come up with $16,500 in 72 hours. And if we don't have the $16,500 in two uh, or 72 hours, uh, uh, they've got a, there's another couple that came in after us uh, that, that they do have the down payment, but they gave us 72 hours to come up with it. And so he said, well, Brother Dallas, he looked at me, he said, Brother Dallas, he said, do you believe God can do it? And while I was standing in his office looking at him eyeball to eyeball, I said, yes, sir, I believe God can do it. But as soon as I left his office, I said, God, can you do that? And so, uh, so I remember him telling me this. He said, Brother Dallas, he said, this is what I want you to do. He said, I don't want you to call any of your preacher friends. I don't want you to call any of your family. He said, I just want you to commit this to God. He said, do you believe the same God that saved you is the same God that can supply for you as well? I said, yes, sir, I believe God can do it. And I remember I, I began to commit that to God. I began to ask God to somehow, some way provide that $16,500. I said, God, I don't have it, but you're the God that owns the cattle on a thousand hills, and you even own the taters on the hill, amen. And God, if you want us to have it, then God, you'll provide it. And I remember I was preaching about two hours away uh, on that Sunday, and uh, he, he got up on Sunday, and his faith was more than mine. He said, the Dallases have found the motorhome they believe that God would have them to get, and they're going to go make the down payment tomorrow. I remember I prayed all day Sunday uh, in between church, uh, uh, before church, and in between church, after church that night as I was driving back home. And we had about 4 o'clock that Monday afternoon to come up with the money, and about 2 o'clock that afternoon, Nikita was out at Walmart. Uh, she spends a lot of time at Walmart, amen. But anyway, I, I, I remember I was at the missions house and I was on a recliner and I was begging and I was asking God to somehow, some way provide uh, the, 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 the means for us to be able to purchase that motor home. And if I'm lying, I'm frying. While I was praying there in that missions house, there was a knock that came on the door. I, I just kept on praying and all of a sudden the knock got louder and uh, I, I just kept on praying. The door came open and I'm saying to myself, while I'm trying to spend time with the Lord in prayer, uh, 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 it sure is weird somebody knock on the door. You don't tell them to come in, but they come in anyhow. And uh, uh, it was my pastor. And my pastor came and knelt beside me. He said, Brother Dallas, he said, do you care if I pray with you? I said, I don't mind at all. And uh, uh, he, 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 he said, Lord, I, I sure do thank you for Chris uh, and Nikita. And Lord, I thank you uh, for not only saving them, but Lord, I thank you for placing the call of evangelism on their life. And Lord, I thank you for filling up their calendar. And Lord, I thank you, Lord, that, uh, that, that you're allowing them to be able to travel across the country. And Lord, I thank you, Lord, that they found the motor home that they believed that you would have them to buy. And Lord, I thank you for that young Marine that just stopped by about 30 minutes ago. And he came to my office and he said, uh, he said, Brother Roberts, he said, uh, uh, how much is the down payment uh, for the Dallas's motor home? And when I told him $16,500, I'm thankful for that young Marine that pulled out his checkbook and he wrote a check for $16,500 uh, so the Dallases could buy their motor home. Can I, I said that story to say this, not only to brag on God, but I said that to say this, uh, that your prayer request tonight may not be for God to supply the down payment for a motor home. Your prayer may be for God to bring back that wayward son or daughter. Your prayer may be for God to meet that financial need. Your prayer may be uh, at the doctor's visit next week. I don't know what your prayer request is, but I do know this, that God is not a respecter of persons. Uh, and God doesn't love Chris and Akita Dallas more than he loves you tonight and the same God that did it for us is the same God that answered your prayer as well let me tell you another story about that motor home we were driving a Ford Taurus before we bought that motor home it never even crossed my mind that it was going to take a whole lot more fuel to fill that motor home than it did that Ford Taurus I was able to fill that four Taurus up for $40. It cost about $400 to fill up that motorhome. It never even crossed my mind. I'm talking about getting the down payment going and signing all the paperwork. It never even crossed my mind until I pulled it up in, in, the, in the church parking lot where we were living in that little missions apartment there until I saw that big old thing sitting out in the parking lot. And I said, man, 
it's going to take a lot of fuel to fill that thing up. And my first meeting was from Jacksonville, North Carolina to Eufaula, Oklahoma. Now, I can't remember the exact mileage, but it was a long way, my friend, I promise you. And I remember Nikita and I were packing up our stuff. We were, uh, Wednesday night, there were some people that came over and helped us pack up our stuff in the motorhome and helped Nikita set it up. And we were packing on Wednesday and on Thursday. And boy, Wednesday and Thursday, I began to just tears streaming down my face and said, God, uh, you supplied uh, you, you supplied the need for us to make the down payment for this motorhome. And Lord, I know that you're going to supply the need for us to be able to fill that motorhome, be able to go from point A to point B across this country. And I said, Lord, I'm just going to depend on you and I'm asking you to somehow, some way, provide the way for us to be able to fill up that motor home. And on Thursday night, as I as we were packing up our stuff, we were leaving the next day on Friday because it was about a two-day uh, journey uh, from Jacksonville to Eufaula, Oklahoma. On Thursday night, as we were packing up our stuff, there was a, a, a there was a church member. Matter of fact, he was the only deacon that we had there at the church. His name was John Stuby. John Stuby was a United Airline pilot, and he was a he he was a good golly man. He wasn't a, I never saw any kind of emotion on a, a John Stubby. Matter of fact, he was a very stoic man, but a good golly man all at the same time. And I'll never forget, Brother Stubby came over as we were packing. He said, Brother Dallas, he said, could I talk to you for just a minute? And I said, sure. And we went inside the mission's house. And all of a sudden, bro, tears began to stream down Brother Stubby's face. And I'm just telling you what he said. And then, I'm saying this story because it's so fresh. I just saw him about a month ago in North Carolina when I was preaching. Tears began to stream down his face. He said, Brother Dallas, he said, uh, he said, every time you preach the word of God, he said, you've been a blessing to me and my family. He said, I don't know if you remember this, but about a year ago, uh, you were preaching here on a Sunday morning. And he said, my son and daughter-in-law, John and Aaron, uh, they walked the aisle under conviction. They got saved by the grace of God at invitation time. And he said, Brother Dallas, he said, you've been a tremendous blessing to us every time uh, you preach to, uh, preach to us. And he said, I know that there's no way in the world that I'll be able to pay you back financially. He said, but our, our family wants to be a blessing to you. He said, a few days ago when we found out that you were getting the motor home, he said, I went and I, I, I applied for a, 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 a pilot uh, gas card. And he said, I asked him to put a rush order on it and send it to me through the mail. And he pulled his wallet out and he said, Brother Dallas, he said, I've got this pilot gas card for you. And he said, every single time that you fill up uh, that motor home, he said, I want you to use this pilot gas card. He said, our family wants to pay for your fuel as you travel across the country and preach the word of God. And can I say for three and a half years, John Stuby and his dear wife, uh, they, they supplied the need for Nikita and I for to get from point A to point B. I said all that to say this again, my dear friend. I understand your need may not be to fill up your vehicle, but I don't care what the need is. I serve the God that can not only answer my need but can answer your need as well amen it's a profitable place I'm so I don't have time to tell you all this every single day I pray for every single one of my family members by name I'm thankful that I was able the same driveway the same driveway that my dad met me in 25 years ago and said Chris he said we've signed the restraining order against you where you can't even come within 100 yards of the house in that same driveway about 10 years ago I was able to lead my dad to the Lord amen can I say I was able to uh, to lead my grandmother-in-law to the Lord I was able to lead my father-in-law to the Lord my dear friend I'm thankful that it's a profitable place called this prayer closet let me give let me give us four closing points about this this matter of prayer look at verse number nine Jesus is teaching the disciples to pray. Matter of fact, he's telling them what to pray. He said, after this manner, therefore pray ye our Father which art in heaven. Look at it. Hallowed be thy name. Can I say this private place puts us in our place. This private place puts us in our place. That word hallowed means consecrated. That word hallowed means revered. That word hallowed means respected. And dear friend, when you and I find out what it is to bend the knee to God in heaven or spend time with God in prayer, wherever it may be, uh, it, it reminds us that we are the creation and He is the creator. It reminds us that because of uh, our sinful nature, we become dirty, but thank God He can make us clean. Uh, it reminds us that we're unrighteous, but thank God He can make us righteous. That private place puts us in our place. Look at verse number 10. Jesus said, pray this, 
Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Can I say this private place establishes a principle to live by. My dear friend, when you and I fulfill God's purpose for our life, and that purpose is to walk with us and talk with us along life's narrow way, no longer does it matter. You understand there's nothing wrong as a new Christian spending time with God because we're commanded to, but somewhere along the way we ought to fall in love with the one that first loved us. And when we have that sincere, dedicated walk with the Lord every single day, all of a sudden it doesn't matter what our ambitions are. It doesn't matter what our goals in life are. It doesn't matter what we want to get in, get out of life is. Uh, all that matters is it's not my will, but God's will be done in my life. Look at verse number 11. He said, pray this. Give us this day our daily bread. This private place, it simplifies our pursuits. That, that bread nourishes. Bread strengthens. And my dear friend, when we find out what it is to have this place called a prayer closet, we understand that what, what's within the pages of this Bible is really all that we need in life. Then look at verse number 12 and verse number 13. Jesus said, pray this and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And we understand, let, let, let me stop and clarify this. I understand that I'm, t I'm preaching to a uh, to a uh, mature crowd tonight, but listen to me, uh, just 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 for sake of saying it, some people have called this. Uh, 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 some people have called this the Lord's prayer. Can I say this is not the Lord's prayer because the Lord never had to confess sin. Amen. He was the sinless Son of God. Some have called this. A, the, the model prayer that's not a that that's not an incorrect term but I like I like that term called the disciples prayer amen and my dear friend that's what all of us ought to strive to be becoming a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ and what that is not only are we saved by the grace of God but also we're passing on to others what we've been taught about God amen and he told them to pray this and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Can I say lastly, this prayer closet helps maintain purity in our lives. You understand the Lord knew that temptation was coming. And my dear friend, temptation coming in our life is not sin. It's when we give in to that temptation that it becomes sin. And a surefire way for you and I to give in a temptation is not to find what it is to have the protection of the Lord Jesus Christ in our life to help us get through that temptation. And one way that we protect our mind, our heart, and everything and it is this matter of prayer. There's two natures that beat within our breast. The one is cursed, the other is blessed. The one I love, the other I hate but the one I feed will surely dominate. And I don't want to feed to the old man that was headed to hell for 22 years of his life. I want to feed to the new man that's been saved by the grace of God. But I cannot do that by feeding upon worldly things and feeding upon carnal things. I must do that by feeding upon the Word of God and finding out what it is to have that dedicated, sincere walk with the Lord every single day of our life. It's probably been 15 years ago now. And there's, I don't have to tell this Sunday night crowd this tonight. Our country, our world is in absolute shambles tonight. It's as wicked and vile and as simple as it's ever been. And the only hope for our country is not a Republican, it's not a Democrat. The only hope for America is a heaven-sent, Holy Ghost-wrought revival among God's people. Fifteen years ago, I was preaching in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. for a, They were like grandparents to Nikita and I. Brother B.G. Buchanan. And Brother Buchanan made this statement that I'll never forget. He said, Brother Dallas, he said, maybe the reason all the wickedness is coming out of its closets in America is because God's people have forgotten about their closet. And my dear friend, we find that Jesus himself was speaking here. We ought to take heed to every 
word in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. But I believe it's safe to say that we ought to take double heed when Jesus is speaking himself. And he said, but he, he said there for in Matthew 6, verse number 6, But thou, when thou prayest, enter thy closet. And when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father, which is in secret. And thy Father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. Stand with me, if you would, all across the building tonight. If you're physically able, stand with me tonight. As the pianist comes to play, could we do this tonight? If we're physically able, could we just come and gather around the altar? Could we pray, could we pray specifically for two things tonight? Could we pray for the United States of America? Could we pray for the peace of Israel?